The North Man is a 2022 film written and directed by Robert Eggers, uh, director of The Lighthouse and The Witch, neither of which I have seen. It's running off on a bad foot. A terrible foot, Brian. Alexander Don't Scott. worry, I got it. Oh, I, I've man, seen I, both I'll, in the know, theater. As long as, we're, uh, as long as we're starting off on bad feet, I'm going to admit something uh, that makes me look like a real moron. A real moron. Kind of happens every time. You'll True, but mouth. this is... This is uh, uh, I didn't realize <laughs> until, until until I saw these movies last night. I did the research. You watched late. both of these movies yeah, last night? Yeah, one afternoon. One at 3.15. Is this because you're seven. out gallivanting? Yeah, I was gone for four days. Where were you? I was in the desert. The desert. You're finding yourself eating shrooms? What are you That's doing? That's right. Doing all those things. You okay. know me. Yeah. You know me. YOLO. Tripping. You were YOLO. <laughs> Tripping and YOLO. Tripping balls. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I was out there in the desert not seeing movies. <laughs> and uh, I said to uh, Christy, I'm like, I'm going to have to see two movies when we get back on Monday. And she's like, fine, do what you got to do. Oh, so that's nice. Northman saw that uh, and did not realize until during the research for the Northman. The, you know, this it's is a very uh, piece. We're in a safe space, right? It's a period piece. You, gonna you, say, I'm not going to be judged. Not modern time. I'm not going to be judged. I mean, I judge you constantly, so you're as safe as you're going to be with me. No, no more, no less. Okay. Listeners, you're okay with this, right? <laughs> I didn't realize that uh, Alexander Skarsgård mm-hmm. was related to Selen Skarsgård okay. or Bill Skarsgård. There's a lot of Skarsgårds out there. They're there not is. all related. I assume, They're not all related. I think I just naively assumed that Skarsgård was like Smith in N- Scandinavia. I think it kind of is. It might be. Yeah. But I, the, the, for, for three contemporary actors, all of whom have the same very distinct last name, uh, I, I probably should have at least had an English. I get them confused and I forget who's related to who. I do. So it's okay. <laughs> okay, good. I feel much better. Uh, Nicole Kidman is in this. Uh, Kleis Bang. Ethan Hawke. Anna Ta- Am I going Anna or Anya? I think it's Anya. Anya, Anya Taylor-Joy. Willem Dafoe. And Bjork. <laughs> Bjork. She got pulled out of retirement. Brad, among Brad. many others. Hey, somebody else got killed while singing in this movie. Oh, true. And so did Bjork back in the day. She got hung. Oh, that's a spoiler. I won't say which movie. I was going to say. Brian probably hasn't yeah, seen it. He looks very confused. Is it a large? It was one of the one of the one of the most satisfying moments in cinema history for me. She was in mid song and then just snapped the neck. No Eight, more singing. Eighty nine percent. Is that safe? Should it. I not have said that? See, I'm second guessing myself. I'm joking around, you fuckers. Come on now. See the fact that you admitted to it now makes it worse. Uh, that I that I think it's funny. Yeah, I think it's funny. Yeah, that's there's well, no way out of this. Admitted to you that you're joking. Yeah, there's no way yeah, out of this. There's no way. I, well, actually, joking would be better than actually being serious. Like, oh yeah, that was best. Watching her die was oh, great. Well, I watched it over and over again. Now. That's what, anyway, I do with the, that's what I do with the Ewok. 89% of Rotten with the, Tomatoes with the, is in the theaters Ewok. now. In theaters now. I had to convince you that actually happened. That's on tape somewhere. Yeah, that's I know a that, demo that an episode. Ewok died. Yes, that's I didn't right. believe it. You and Logan both had to prove it to me. So uh, this is uh, a uh, filmed uh, Nordic version of The Lion King. This uh, has uh, almost... <laughs> what? Uh, Young boy uh, watches his father die mm-hmm. at his uncle's hand mm-hmm. and is banished, uh, thought for dead, but mm-hmm. uh, in fact grows up to be a, a powerful right. young lion. Which is King Lear, right? No, it's uh, Hamlet. It's Hamlet. Hamlet. That's what I, yes. Mm-hmm. They're, all, they're, they're all basically inter- versions of Hamlet. And uh, there's a lot of paganism here. And there's mm-hmm. a lot of mythology. Uh, there's a lot of uh, occult occurring. That's right. They talk shit about the, uh, the Catholic or the uh, Christians. Christians, yes. Uh, the Christians are uh, not to be trusted. Mm-hmm. That was very offensive for me as a white Christian male. <laughs> Let me tell you. I thought... Okay, stick with me. I liked this movie. I like, yeah. actually enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought it was, I had the thought during the movie, this is a good, bad movie. Mm-hmm. Meaning like, okay, we've, it's Hamlet. It's whatever. We've seen these tropes a thousand times right. in a thousand movies, but it's executed super well. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, this is a good, bad movie. Are you with me on the theory? Well, not, I think you're mixing it up. It, mm. It's it's a good movie based on a tropey story. Mm. I don't even think bad is. I mean, it's a, an age old mm. tale that's been told over and over yeah, again for a reason. A much. And there's only so many stories you can tell, right? right? But I, I get what you're saying. Uh, it's it's way better than it it, it could have been considering the the material. However, when you look at the material and how Eggers, you know, you write what you know. He was born. He he was raised by like these uh, incredibly like. Uh, sophisticated uh, literates like mm. his parents were like uh, his his dad in particular was a professor of oh, really? of, uh, of Shakespeare I and he went to the Makes material sense. for this movie in the Northman this is material that is a predate Shakespeare and is uh, evidently uh perhaps what inspired Shakespeare to write uh, a lot of the shit that wrong he did about that nothing predate Shakespeare 
mm-hmm. was the first. That's Brian uh, calling on his his uh, literary literary roots that from was, uh, his that was school my, of journalism. That was my, uh, uh, toxic masculinity roots. But there's a lot of debate. I you know I read about this. A lot of debate whether or not. Uh, uh, Shaky uh, actually got a chance to uh, read some of this stuff. He, they, the thought, the prevailing thought is that he was familiar with these stories, and that's sure. what led He's to his. He's a fellow. He his, saw many, many plays. But uh, yeah, so but there was also a big argument like there's no way he could have read these things because they weren't transcribed at the time, or you know they weren't sure, available. But he probably he saw probably some saw interpretations. Yes. Anyway, let's set the table in the Northmen. So uh, much like the Lion King, uh, you have a young boy and uh, his uh, king father, and the king father is uh, is raising him to be a man. But uh, wouldn't you know it, his uh, his evil uncle, uh, the father's brother, the king's brother, uh, uh, turns on him, assassinates him, and uh, right in front of the boy's eyes, and uh, says, "Get bring me the boy's head." Mm-hmm. And the boy, uh, to his credit, uh, causes some nose trauma. Yeah, he does, and uh, escapes uh, to ra- to raise himself. Oh, he escapes, and he's picked up by another. A, tribe a, a Viking, or, yeah, a Viking rogue group. And he's basically turned into a savage warrior. Yeah. Although I think he's the the, the pump is already primed. He goes over and he, this is also a little uh, uh, bu- 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 Star Wars, right? I mean, sure. It's, got, it's Luke Skywalker essentially, yeah. but he's not the Luke Skywalker, the the, the cute, fluffy Luke Skywalker right. that we the innocent moisture farmer. So we we flash forward to uh, our scars guard, uh, now full grown man, Alexander. <laughs> Bill. And, oh. Yeah. What? Those Bill scars guard. No, it's, it's, it's Alexander, time. and he's uh, he's in the boat, and uh, you know we see some savagery uh, happen immediately, and you expect him because we've been primed and expect our heroes to speak up whenever yeah. they have a chance to. That's the first of many examples. If I remember the boat uh, arrow incident, yeah, where just, you're like, oh, this, this is not. They're not spoon feeding us like the classic, you know, white, black, good, you know, good yeah. versus evil. You know, the, this is our hero, and he is a virtue He's on of a justice. boat he, filled with many other Vikings. They're all rowing. There's a few, a, a couple different boats. Each boat's got like 20, 20 dudes in it. And one of the fucks, uh, one of the assholes, uh, Vikings, one of these guys that just has a lizard-like brain who doesn't have empathy for others. You know, there's so many of them. They're always raised to power brain, and they just take it. They just take what they want. And we and, and, and us people who are actually, uh, you know, c- concerned for others. And uh, believe it or not, I'm very concerned well, for uh, for others. You alluded to it. Sorry to interrupt. You alluded to it earlier. And I wanted to say empathy is a weakness, right? Like like in nature, like in the survival. You can defense. use it to be cunning, though, like An- Anya Taylor-Joy. Oh, I see. You know, you know, you can use it to be cunning. And I think that needs to happen more often or else, you know, 200 years from now, is assuming we aren't... Uh, uh, you know, burnt to a crisp uh, with the old global warming over there. Will be, will be. Uh, you know, we'll it's, still gonna be, it's still going to be. It's still going to be the same thing. Whoever's willing to you just do the most dastardly, uh, despicable deeds is going to rise to the top. Everyone's going to move to Scandinavia, where it's going to be a desert climate. And it's the minority of us are are the ones who are on this Viking boat who think it's funny to just spear and just <laughs> arrow down like a little couple who was on sure. a little fishing boat. So this guy, one of the Vikings stands up and he kills these two, this little couple on, on this boat that they're going by just for, for giggles. And he's laughing and you, we see our, our hero, quote unquote, kind of look at him and works. And I'm expecting, I don't know if you're expecting, I was expecting him to say something, maybe do something. He did nothing. He kept his head down and kept rowing. And that yeah. set the tone. I mean, in a sense, you could argue, oh, he has a purpose, a self-assigned um, purpose greater than this. Why would he waste his time? But on the other hand, it's like, oh, yeah, we've been trained through decades of movies that, like, the hero will step up or will say, the, 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 the Westerns, you know, if someone did that to the town folk, someone would step up and say, no, that's not right. Here's the difference, though. Usually the Westerns is like a lone gunman who's, like, out on, mm-hmm. like the blonde guy, yeah. like uh, Clint Eastwood, right? Like, he, he he's a lone wolf. He does his own thing. He had to be a part of a group that, wasn't necessarily after the same thing he was, uh, but he, and not, you know what? We never even get the sense that he wants justice for himself, but he wasn't even going for a greater good. He was just going for pure vengeance. That was yeah. his entire motivation. He wasn't trying to right a wrong, like improve the world. He, wasn't wanted, he wanted bloodlust. Yeah, he just wanted bloodlust, and he was willing to be a part of a very, very ugly machine to get it and to get to where he wanted to go. So, yeah, I get it. It's hard to uh, completely get on board, but just at the sheer filmmaking of it, of it all. Uh, Eggers is not relying on, on a ton of coverage. Uh, they're working on 360 degree sets, which means there's not like, Oh, they're in the middle of fields and villages and they follow their primary subject through these battlefields. And it's completely immersive and it's, it's ballsy filmmaking What's and it's hard tough to on the uh, tough on the actors, tough on the crew. It's tough on everybody. But what you get is this, 
this experience, this this movie that you really get a taste of what it was like back then. It's kind of Revenant esque. I just thought of it just now. Very Inuri too, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I get the sense that Eggers is not as much of a, a dick to work with. <laughs> I can't say one or the other. So you know, I I thought, and I fucking hate that I that I had this thought while watching this movie. Uh, that wow, what would a, a Marvel movie look like uh, by by Robert Eggers? Uh, however, yeah, I don't think that oh, that's no. the gritty Thor. That's not possible. Mm. I don't think it's possible because the the type of caliber actor that works mm. for Marvel movies they it's not easy work, but they're not coal miners, and mm. they don't. But they don't want to do do this type of shooting. This one single camera, uh, very little coverage. You know, uh, constant breaks. They. They don't want it. Speaking of Marvel, they won't be able to do it. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a compliment. I hope you take it like that, because mm. it's gonna sound insulting. Uh-huh. I mean, most of your compliments are like that. Very backhanded. You're wearing glasses. Oh Jesus Christ! He is wearing glasses. Not anymore. I just you got the off. kind of a, a, a blondish, uh, the lighter, spiky hair. I got dirty blonde hair, yes, bro. You look like thick James Gunn. Oh, you can go fuck yourself. Uh, James Gunn's it's a very not a compliment. No, at all. Sw- okay. I like James swole, Gunn, but I don't. Swole James Gunn. Oh, thick James Gunn. Look, dude. Let's talk more <laughs> James, about the North. James Rifle. All right. Here's something else that's very interesting. Like James Shotgun. And it's 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 paralleled uh, with everything that I'm talking about here. And that is uh, their pagan belief. Uh, a belief. That's what it was. Pagan belief. That if they die in battle, uh, they get oh, to they go to Valhalla. Sure, and if yeah. you if also if, if you're trying to understand what this movie is, if we're not describing it well enough, uh, to go to something even way more esoteric than this, because this is a big movie. This is this is the biggest movie Robert Eggers has ever been afforded, and it's probably his last big movie because it's failing miserably. Because oh yeah, we're doing box office. Here's now. here's what a just a couple. These are back to back. Well, it's a tough movie. It's a little long. It's two hours and almost twenty minutes. It's very violent. It's very dark. It doesn't have. A-list stars. I, mean, I guess Nicole Kidman, but no one's going to see this for Nicole Kidman. It's got an A-list trailer though that uh, really gets the yeah. the blood pumping. Oh, it's for, a good for movie. Most... I'm, I'm not going to also if shy you're, away. if you're squeamish with violence and and whatnot. They don't show a lot of like the really what? Uh, horrific like uh, sex vi- violence that's happening on the screen. It's implied, but you don't have to sure. endure it. Uh, however, there is just a, a whole lot of really like just punch to the face. There's one scene in particular where somebody's hung up and just blood like Kool Aid is just pouring out of their mouth. There's menstrual uh, there's, blood uses. There's as menstru- yeah, there's there's some if you're if you're squirmish at all, this is not the movie for you, which is unfortunate because it's it's like I said, it's an experience. 